Hi, I'm Roger Altman and welcome to Roger Shop. What I'm going to cover today is uh, a scroll saw storage solution. Uh, in the past I've always stored my uh, scroll saw blades either in the uh, little vinyl package they come in. I generally buy Flying Dutchman brand. Or they are in a DeWalt T-Stack drawer and they get all mixed up and then when you go to try to pick a blade, especially as I'm getting older, my eyesight's not what it used to be. It's hard to tell what's what. So made this little organizer here and I'll get into the dimensions of it in a minute and what everything is uh, in it but uh, what's nice is they don't fall out but yet you can easily take one out the uh, plastic caps on here take one out of here, it's an empty one they just pop out, put your blades in pop this back on everything fits good set on the bench if it gets full of dust at the top turn it upside down, dump dust out or vacuum it out or blow it out, either one Okay, so what are all the components here? The base here is actually part of an old 4x4 fence post. Happened to have been uh, Western Red Cedar. Watch I don't drop that on my foot. And what I did was I ran it through the planer. You could do the same thing on your table saw. And I cut it down so it was 3 inches square. It was originally 3.5, but it was severely weathered. Uh, then I set the blade up one and a half inches, set my fence one and a half inches, made two cuts, one this way, one this way, made an L shape. And then I needed to know what size holes I needed to drill and do a layout. So what I did was I uh, bought these here tubes. They're actually plastic test tubes. You get 48 of them for $14 on uh, eBay. They're uh, 150 millimeters long and the diameter of them well I don't remember what the metric diameter was but the uh, in fractional inches it's 0 .610 diameter so the closest thing I had for a drill bit was a 5 8 which is 0 .625 and a Forster bit right here so I laid out my holes they're an inch and a half apart on center the lower section is offset by three quarters of an inch so they turn this around the other way so they fall in between each other so they won't block the view of what's in there and depth wise uh, about seven eighths of an inch deep but what I found out after I drilled these was uh, since these tubes I'm going out of the bag here the tubes are not flat on the bottom they have a taper or they're rounded like this. So I took a uh, 5 8 twist drill with a 118 degree point like this and followed through a little bit to make a bevel on the bottom and let it get it to bevel down. Well they would sit better but they were still like weebles and weebles wobble but they don't fall down and that was the problem I was having was these were wobbling around in there. So what I ended up doing was taking a of course the cell phone rings, but we'll let that go. I took a little wrap of electrical tape right around the bottom. It makes it nice and snug in the hole, so therefore everything fits real good. And that's what enables me to be able to turn this upside down. Snug fit, but still able to take them in and out easily. Well, it's stuck a little bit, but like so. And I have some empties in here. Uh, what I did was after I uh, what I should say before I put my blades in, I labeled each one of these uh, little test tubes which, with what the blade is. For example, this is a Flying Dutchman blade. It's a UR5 15 tooth per inch, and that's all that's in this one. Uh, I've got all my straight blades at the top, and I am one of them people. I am a fan of spiral blades. I know some people don't like them. Um, if you're not experienced with a scroll saw, don't start out with spiral blades, you'll just get frustrated. But my spiral blades are on the lower level, my straight blades are up here on the top level. I do have a tube here for uh, miscellaneous medium type because I just got too frustrated trying to sort these out and a tube of miscellaneous fine tooth. Uh, I picked these up at a uh, auction 
last winter, winter of 2019, and uh, they were already all mixed up. So I sat down with a can of an adult beverage and uh, sorted out the fines from the mediums. That's as far as I took it. And they're fine for utilitarian use. Okay, so what did I use to label these? Um, I, as you know, if you've watched a lot of my previous videos, I'm a retired electrician, and in those years, uh, one of the handiest tools we had was this Brady Labeler. And after I retired, I missed having access to one, so went on eBay and bought a used one. Uh, it works fine. You can either uh, run it off batteries. It does take a lot of batteries, or batteries if you're from across the pond. Uh, it uses triple A's or you can use the AC adapter which just plugs in right here. And there's different types and sizes of uh, label cartridges. As I know Brother makes one, there's a P-Touch, there's quite a few different ones. But uh, I was the most familiar with this because I used it for years and years and years. So I uh, bought myself one of them. Now they're not cheap, but they're extremely rugged and very reliable. Okay, so this is my little solution to uh, some scroll blade storage. Uh, you can make it whatever length you want. Uh, I just cut a length at random and then uh, did some layout and then trimmed it down. And uh, It's got a coat of uh, clear varnish on it. You probably wouldn't even need to do that. I mean it is a shop fixture, but kind of wanted it to look nice I guess. Uh, so, hope you got something out of this. And if you did, I uh, appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. Of course, comments are always welcome. And we're always looking for subscribers, so please subscribe. And if you hit that little bell on the lower right-hand corner of the window, uh, you'll be notified when we post another video. Until then, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.